Welcome to another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. I'm Professor Jim Powers. This video will demonstrate how to measure insertion loss on a multi-mode fiber optic link using a Zoom 2 optical power meter and a dual OWL series multi-mode light source. There are four main steps in the process of measuring insertion loss of any fiber optic link. These steps are gathering link information and accessories, checking the equipment and accessories for proper operation, setting an optical reference, also called zeroing, and then taking insertion loss measurements. Before beginning any fiber test, the user must gather the necessary link information and accessories required to complete the test. Link information is used to help determine how much loss is acceptable for the fiber under test, otherwise known as a link budget. Optical loss measurements are compared to the link budget to determine if the fiber is good or not, which is the same as saying pass or fail. There are five key parameters that apply to any fiber optic test. First is the fiber type, which will be either single mode or multi-mode. In the case of multi-mode, this could be either 62.5 or 50 micron. Next is fiber length. It is important to know how much fiber is in the link under test in order to determine how much loss is acceptable for that particular length of fiber. Some OWL testers can be used to measure the end-to-end -end length of the fiber automatically, including the Fiber OWL 4 bolt optical power meter. Otherwise, the user can use jacket markings, installation documents, or other length measurement methods such as OTDR. For best results, avoid estimating the fiber length whenever possible. Third is number of connections. A connection is the point where two fiber connectors mate together, such as in a patch panel, wall plate, or mating sleeve. Fourth is the number of splices, which can be either fusion or mechanical. For the purpose of calculating a link budget, most cabling standards do not distinguish between fusion and mechanical splices. Lastly, the user must determine what wavelengths they will test at. For multi-mode, this is 850 and or 1300 nanometers. And for single mode, this is 1310 and or 1550 nanometers. When using a micro owl or fiber owl optical power meter, these parameters can be entered directly into the device to calculate the link budget. However, if the link budget needs to be calculated manually, this is done simply by adding together the fiber loss, connection loss, and splice loss. Fiber loss is given in dB per kilometer and varies based on the fiber type and wavelength. To calculate fiber loss, multiply the fiber length in kilometers by the fiber loss. Connection loss is the number of connections multiplied by the dB loss per connection. Splice loss is the number of splices multiplied by the dB loss per splice. Most users will follow the fiber, connection, and splice loss specified in cabling standards, such as the TIA-568. It is also helpful to determine the connector type used in the link under test, which will help determine the right reference cable configuration to use. For accessories, it is highly recommended to keep at least three patch cables on hand, since there are three reference methods, one jumper, two jumper, and three jumper. Mating sleeves may also be required for some link configurations. Refer to OWL's video on reference methods for more information. Finally, if testing multi-mode fiber, the launch cable attached to the light source will also need to be wrapped around a mandrel according to cabling standard specifications. Refer to OWL's video on mandrels for more information. As you can see, we've gathered the equipment and accessories we're using for this insertion loss test. In this case, we're using a Zoom 2 optical power meter and a dual OWL multimode light source. Now you'll notice that there are two ports up here, uh, one for 850 nanometers and one for 1300 nanometers. Now this dual owl can come in several configurations. Uh, it can either come with an 850 only or 1300 only or dual wavelength uh, like you see here. Uh, the procedure will, today we're going to demonstrate how to do a dual wavelength measurement. Now you can also see that we have our three patch cables here. So we have one patch cable here that will stay with the zoom when it's uh, when we're taking our loss measurement and then we have a, a duplex cable wrapped around a mandrel, uh, one of these uh, cables each for the two wavelengths you see here on the light source. Now the reason I have a duplex cable wrapped around a mandrel is that it's easier to handle 
uh, one mandrel with two cables than it is to handle um, you know, two separate mandrels and two separate cables. So the first thing we need to do is, once we've gathered our accessories, is we need to test the patch cables and make sure they're, they're okay to use. Now, the first thing we need to do from this, uh, at this point, is to power on the equipment. So we press the, the power button on each of the testers. And as you can see on the dual owl, uh, 850 nanometer uh, is lit by default here. And then um, on the zoom, you see that 850 nanometers is shown on the display here. Now, one uh, feature about the zoom too is that it remembers what wavelength and uh, uh, power units settings uh, that were set when the uh, meter was turned off last. In this case, uh, it was set to 850 and dBm units. Um, so, well, the first thing we want to do here is connect our our orange patch cable here, and this is the one that will stay with the zoom. We simply connect it into the uh, the A50 port on the light source and the detector port on the power meter. And as you can see, we have a reading here of around minus 19.24. Okay, our target value is around minus 20 dBm. This is where the uh, the dual light source is calibrated uh, against our, our, our NIST traceable source. Now, this is okay since we're not close, we're, we're close to minus 20. Um, we're a little bit higher than that, but that's okay. Uh, what we really want to be concerned with is that we're not exceeding minus 21 dBm. If we're below minus 21 dBm, then we would want to consider replacing that patch cable. But for now, we're going to assume this cable is good and we will uh, put the dust caps back on and, and, and set it aside. We will not need this cable for a while yet, so you know, just put it off to the side here. And then take the, the duplex cable here and then plug it into the two ports on the dual L. Okay. Now, once we're, once we're connected into the light source, uh, this is just a helpful tip, is that once we've set a reference, we've checked our equipment, set our references, we, we do not want to disconnect from, from the light source ports here. Um, uh, simply because if you do so and you reconnect, you're, you're introducing a different reference level and your, your readings will no longer be correct. So you'd have to re-zero and retest. So don't disconnect from these ports. And likewise, do not allow the cable to come unwrap from the mandrel for the same exact reason. Uh, if you're allowing the the cable to come unwrapped, you're allowing more light to come into the reference cable, and um, that'll make your, your reference level on the meter incorrect. So you'll have to retest. So again, just to reiterate, do not disconnect these these connections here once you've set a reference, and do not unwrap this cable from the mandrel at least until you're done testing. So. First of all, we want to test the uh, the 850 nanometer reference cable. So we locate the the right uh, connector here, and then we plug it into the detector port. Okay, as you can see, we have a value of minus 20.10. This is very close to minus 20. In fact, this is almost as close as you can get. Um, so once we've dis uh, determined that this cable is okay. Um, it's okay, now we can actually set a reference for this wavelength. So, in order to do that, we simply press and hold this units zero button. Now, the units, it, there are two functions for this button. Uh, by just pressing the button, you change the measurement units. However, if you hold the button, you'll zero out this wavelength. Just like that. Okay, you see how you have 0, 0.0 dB. Okay, this, this is the whole reason why we call this procedure zeroing. Okay, the meter has recorded the value coming through this reference cable from, from this port here and set it to zero. Now, what we want to do is uh, assume that this cable is good. It, it's, it's good and it has been zeroed out. But what we want to do is check the other cable now. So let's plug in the 1300 nanometer reference cable. Now, as you can see, it says low. You're not receiving a power level. The reason it says low is because no power level, or I'm sorry, 
no light is coming into the detector port. And there's no amount of light that's being uh, that's able to be measured. The reason this is is because uh, we are connected with our 1300 nanometer cable, but we're still set to 850 over here on this side. So what we want to do is switch the wavelength. You can see that the the indicator LED switches over to 1300 now. Now, when we're checking our equipment, we don't want to check the equipment in DB mode. We want to be in DBM. This is where this units button comes in handy. So you press the button, or the units button, a couple times until you see DBM, okay? Now that we see DBM there, we got to make sure that we're set to 1300. See, it says 850 here. So we have to change our wavelength by pressing uh, this button on the left here until the power meter reads 1300. Now, as you can see, uh, the reference level here is minus 19.94. This also is a good patch cable. So, now that we've determined that this is a good patch cable, we can simply zero out the 1300 wavelength. And again, you see that once we've done that, we've, we see a value of zero dB. Now, we have uh, checked our equipment, accessories, we've zeroed out our testers. Now it's time to take measurements. Okay, now that our equipment is zeroed out, we can take the, uh, the two testers to opposite sides of the link and connect them in in order to take the insertion loss measurement. Now, what we need to do, remembering that we do not disconnect the cable from the light source, we disconnect from the power meter, and we take the light source to one side of the link. Pretend that that's one side. And then we take the power meter with its cable that we set aside earlier to the other side of the link. Okay, so let's say that this side of the link is one closet and then this side of the link is another closet. What I've done to demonstrate here is to use this little box here. It's, it's got a little spool of fiber inside uh, to simulate a little fiber link. Now use your imagination. Pretend that side B here is one in one closet and side A is in another closet. As you can see, there's six port patch panel on either side. So first thing we do is we, uh, I guess what we want to do first is, is uh, let, let's test at 850 nanometers just to keep things uh, organized. So press the wavelength on both testers until we are set to 850 nanometers. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to connect our reference cables into port number one on both sides. Okay, now, as you can see, once we connect it in, uh, what we're seeing on the screen here is a, a loss reading. In this case, we're seeing minus 1.5 dB. Okay, now, whether this is good or not, we don't know, um, unless we have a, a, a pre-configured link budget. Uh, this is something that we may have done earlier on in the procedure. But just for uh, argument's sake, let's assume that our link budget is uh, 2.5 dB of loss. Okay, so in that case, this reading is good because we're only losing uh, 1.5 dB. Okay, this negative sign means loss. You want to see that there. Uh, if you do not see this negative sign, that means there may be a procedural issue and you might need to uh, go back and re-zero out and things like that. Uh, but in this case, we have minus 1.5 dB of loss, and we're assuming that this is good considering our link budget of, of 2.5 dB. Now, one helpful tip when we're storing readings using the zoom and the duo owl uh, like this, it's far easier to, to store all the readings or, I'm sorry, test all the readings at one wavelength first uh, and record the readings if we need to, um, and then switch the wavelength uh, when we're done with, uh, with the, uh, the first set of readings. Uh, this way, we're not switching the wavelength back and forth and back and forth, um, perhaps getting, uh, getting some readings confused. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate that here uh, by testing all six of the fibers at 850 nanometers first.
And finally, we take the reading for fiber number six. Uh, again, as you can see, we have a reading of minus 1.82 dB. Uh, as, as you may have noticed, we all of our readings passed, and if we wanted to record them, we would have written them down on a piece of paper. So we're, con we're confident that all these fibers are working at 850 nanometers, but we also want to test at 1300 nanometers. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the, the power meter cable back to port number one. We're going to disconnect the 850 nanometer reference cable and then plug the 1300 nanometer reference cable into port number one. Now, remember, we wanted to switch the wavelengths on both sides. So, press the wavelength button on the zoom, and then we press the wavelength button on the dual owl. Now we're set to 1300 nanometers. Now again, as you can see, let's say our link budget for 1300 is 2.2 dB, for example. This would still be a good reading, so we'll record that if we need to, and then we'll go on and, and test the rest of the fibers. All right, and finally we take a reading for uh, our final readings for 1300 nanometers. As you can see, the, some of these readings were fairly close to our pass-fail point, but they all, all did pass at some point. So, once we're, we're done recording all our values, uh, we can uh, be assured that our link is, has been properly tested for insertion loss. This has been another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. For more information about additional instructional videos, or OWL fiber optic test equipment in general, please visit OWL's website at owl-inc.com. I'm Professor Jim Powers. Thanks for watching.